Well, my mama told me there'd be days like this When you don't need to worry There'll be days like this When no one's in a hurry There'll be days like this When you don't get betrayed By that old Judas kiss Oh, my mama told me There'll be days like this When you don't need an answer, there'll be days like this. When you don't need a chance, there'll be days like this. When all the parts of the puzzle start to look like they fit me, then I must remember there'll be days like this. When you don't have no freeloaders, I to get the kicks. Well, that's nobody's business, the way that you want to live. I just have to remember, there'll be days like this. When no one steps on my dreams, there'll be days like this. When people understand what I mean, there'll be days like this. When you ring out the changes of how everything is Well, my mama told me there'll be days like this To the rhythm of freedom, your smile presses on the soul of the world. Your voice and echo ever calling me to come and know myself in this place unexplored. You've been a light in darkened places. Teach me what grace is. And to trust in the soul I've become Oh, the magic of you And your heart's many faces Teaching to me my own wisdom And you said, bring, bring, bring your intensity Bring, bring your shame Bring all of yourself to me I have less space Bring, bring your beauty and Bring, bring your love, bring all of yourself to me, you are already enough.
Good evening. Hello. How many times does a puppy pee? Can you tell me this? Like every time I go past the mop up. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's so good to see you. Um, just to check in that you have got your uh, a journal or a pad to write in. Um, lavender oil, if you've got some, will be great. It doesn't matter if you don't. Um, a little bowl of water. Um, we're going to do a little um, release uh, um, ritual and a candle. And I think that might be all. Uh, some smudge if you need, if you feel you need it as well. So you might want some blessing herbs. How's everyone doing? How oh, good to see you all. How lovely. Happy New Year as well. Nikki! <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure yeah oh and your cacao if it, um you don't have to have cacao uh, but if you've got some that would be good we'll do a little uh, we'll do a little cacao blessing as well um tonight so Romina are you with you're together oh hello <laughs> oh you both there gorgeous Oh, it's so lovely. Hi, Ellie and Jen. And oh, it's so lovely to see everyone. Oh, gorgeous. So welcome to 2023. Like such an exciting year for us witches. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is going to be like literally big, big year, I think, for us all. Um, so it's quite exciting that we um we're coming in with this beautiful cancer full moon and you know this real invitation to rest and uh, um you know start to really dream up um what we want to create for 2023 i know i've been doing that quite a lot um myself just lately so and um, let's have a little drop in so just get yourselves comfy and uh, can everyone hear me all right? Is the sound okay? Yeah, great. I'll keep the music off because isn't the moon, oh mate, I know, it's, it's just a bit shining through at the back of our house. It's so lovely. Um, so yeah, so let's just have a little drop, drop in. Ah, so just taking a nice deep breath, get yourselves comfy if you, if you need a blanket and, um, you know, just get yourself cosy. I like this just to be real cozy time for us um just to really drop into our heart space and uh, let's have a little check in with how we're doing because we're post christmas post new year and our sharon's been holding space today so she's <laughs> filling her cup again uh today so yeah um let's just bring bring ourselves in so if you want to just uh put your palms down on your knees let's just do a nice little little grounding practice I've actually just put lavender in my cacao it is so nice if you have not tried that lavender oil and cacao oh my god it's so good <laughs> so just having a nice uh nice breath in for yourself and just let your um your base be wide so whether you were sitting cross-legged or if you've got your feet on the floor but just take your feet wide so that you you're nice and um like open to that lovely earth energy. And then just have your palms down on your knees. If you're feeling a little bit um, scatty with the moon, you're a bit like, whoa, up here, then you might wanna just take a couple of breaths in and then just bring that energy just down your center and just bring it all the way down. Hi, Amy. So just a couple of breaths to bring yourselves in. And then just gently closing your eyes, I'm just going to open up our circle for tonight. And um, we're here on the full moon this time. But I think the rest of the year, these monthly circles are going to be actually on new moon. So we're going to be um, a bit more intention setting. But this is a great opportunity for, for release tonight as well. So just going to ask you just to bring your right hand onto your heart space. So just take your right hand over the, the center of your chest and just connect in with your heart. So I feel that the, 
the invitation um, for the year ahead is to just to really actually chop off the head completely. <laughs> it's like Carly, you know, just chop off the head and uh, really start to live from heart, from this beautiful energy of love as we move forward into, into this new year. So I'm going to open the space with a, a women's blessing. To the women who held us our whole lives, we give great thanks. To the women around us who dance with us, sing with us, and impart their love and wisdom to us on a daily basis, we give great thanks. To the wise women of our futures, the ones who aren't yet born, the ones who are still so young, but will teach us the most, and our beautiful sisters in our circle, we give great thanks. Our circle today is now open. So just taking a nice deep breath in for yourself and I'm just, just going to turn your palms up now in a gesture of receiving. So just really feeling that space of receptivity, just really open to receiving the love and the energy within the, this beautiful, beautiful community of gorgeous, gorgeous women. And just taking a moment just to notice you just to really call your energy home to yourself and just being aware of how utterly incredible you are and just allow yourself to receive all this beautiful light energy from the moon and I just want you to be aware of what the moon is illuminating for you just now. So what is showing up? What is being brought into the light? We are still in this real deep winter part of the year, but it's what is just beginning to stir a little bit. Uh, for many of us, I know in the group, there's been a lot of shadow um, rising over um, the last few weeks. So just notice how you're doing with that at the moment. So this cancer full moon really shines on the areas of our life that need nurture, that need nourishing, that need tender, loving care, where we can be kinder to ourselves. So where we can be more tender, more loving more forgiving. You're just noticing how, how that energy is for you. How does it feel to be in stillness, be in the quiet, be in the dark? As you just feel your weight down, as if with your next out breath, you just let your weight down a little bit more, as if you just land a little bit more into this moment. And just feeling a, an energetic root, maybe just beginning to spiral down from the base of your spine, all the way down through your seat, down through the floor down through the foundations of your building into the softness of the earth. And just follow that spiral down deeper through rock and stone, down through ancient rivers and water tables and tectonic plates and all the way down to the very heart of our beautiful Mother Earth. And as our roots arrive together, even though we are all in our individual spaces, we come together as one. We are all connected. We are all here in a collected um, 
a beautiful feminine purpose of really allowing the feminine to rise, to really step into this beauty of sisterhood, of connection. Just having a moment without feeling of rootedness and maybe even visualize the heart of Mother Earth like a red crystal. We are all connected to. And just taking a moment to, to really feel into in this moment, what is it that you need? What do you need for yourself just to bring balance, to bring harmony, to bring nourishment to you? What do you need? And we're going to imagine that we can call that energy in from the heart of Mother Earth as a red vibration. So from that red crystal at the heart of Mother Earth, just allow whatever it is that you need to rise through your root, in through your root chakra, that four-petaled lotus at the base of your spine. Let it fill all the spaces that need a little extra care today. Whatever quality, whatever intention that you might like to bring in for yourself, just let it fill all the spaces. And imagine that vibration of red surrounding your body and it's as if Mother Earth just holds you. She just wraps her arms around you and holds you close. As you feel yourself here in the, in the presence of earth, held, grounded, supported, loved. Let's take a lovely deep breath in. And then just um, allowing your eyes to just gently open. And I'd just like you to take your candle and with intention, I want you to just to light this candle for yourself. So this light is really just dedicated to you. It's just for you. So just let's uh, bring our candles just maybe to your screen. And just connect all of our lights together. Beautiful. Gorgeous. And then we're just going to place your candle just somewhere just in front of you, the way you can just let your eyes rest for a moment. And just connect the outer light with the inner light, the light in the heart. And just let your eyes rest in the flame, just absorb the light. And this is a really good practice if you, um, if, you, if you do suffer a little bit with the blues in the winter time. The tratak or the like candle gazing is really great for this. So five minutes a day, morning and night can really help, help with your mood. But just take a moment to connect in with that lovely light. And then if you've got your lavender oil, let's just bring some of that in as well. So I just, just bring a couple of drops into the palm, palm of your hand. And then it's going to warm that between your palms. And um, I've just been really loving working with these oils just recently. 
um, on a slightly deeper level, more um, like an emotional level um, with these oils. So um, lavender is um, the gift. My gift to you is contemplation. And this is um, part of what I thought was quite a nice um, oil to bring in tonight. So that is linked to calm communication and intuition. So great for dreaming and visioning. So this is a high vibrational oil and a concentrated form of sun energy. So just breathe it in, breathe it in. You can, I like to swish, I love the word swish. So you can just swish it through your energy field as a little clearing. So just over through, just swish all the way through. And then if you wanna just place a little bit onto your third eye. So we're just gonna activate a little bit of our a lovely dream weaver in third eye. And then like I said, if you wanna just breathe her in a little more. And then let's just bring her into our heart as well. And her affirmation or mantra, her sacred vow is, it's okay to pause, to rest, and to just be. It's okay to pause, to rest, and to just be. Lovely. So just bring in your cacao into your heart field. If you, um, if you have cacao, if you don't have cacao, um, just, you know, just water is one of the best medicines um, or herbal tea or whatever, whatever you've got. And um, we we'll just connect with heart because um, the um, one of the compounds within within um, ceremonial cacao is ananda, which is um, the bliss molecule, and it's um, it's really connected to the heart, to our heart. And the only other way, the other place that this molecule is actually found is in the human heart. So when we take cacao into our into our body, our heart goes. I, I recognize you, I know you, and we get this little energetic connection. So as we bring our cacao into our heart field, we'll, um, I'm just gonna offer a, a little uh, cacao blessing. And um, it's really nice, I think, to really honor the medicine, the lineage of the medi medicine. And, um, you know, the people who bring it to us, to our cup, the faces we will never see and the names we will never know, we thank you. To the elders, the wise ones, the ones who knew. To the ancestors, the men and women who sought refuge and holy communion with cacao. To the ones who believed, who trusted and who called in the spirits, we honor you. To the Mayans, the ancient tribes and communities. To the ones who kept the spirit of cacao alive and close to their hearts for centuries, we thank you to the spirit of cacao, for your wisdom, for your nutrients and your heart warm nourishment, we thank you. The ones who serve cacao today, who encourage connection with this ancient knowledge and wisdom, to the ones who blend old worlds with new, please continue. The ones who are drinking cacao around the world this very moment, to the women who found their voice, their power, their might, and the women who are struggling, lost and hidden, we drink for you, aha. So with an intention in mind, a beautiful intention, not only for yourself, but for all women on our planet, as you take your first sip, welcome the spirit of this beautiful being. And at your second sip, feeling the warmth of this beautiful plant medicine, this plant teacher, as she moves through your body, opening your heart and bringing nourishment into every cell of your body. And 
Let your third sit with your lovely intention. Allow that intention to really ground into your body. Just take it right down through your roots into the earth. Let your third sit. And then as you finish your cacao, just taking a little moment just to contemplate, just have a little feel into anything that might be still hanging around your energy field. So just notice if there's anything from the year past, any heaven, heavy or stagnant energy still kind of hanging, hanging around. And we're going to release this into our water in a moment because I want to just clear everything through before we move into um, bringing anything new in. And it would be really nice also if you might like to um, type into the, the little type box um, a word just to share how you're feeling at the moment, how your energy is, how are you doing, how, are, how is the moon affecting you or um, just anything that's on your heart. If you want to just stick that in the chat box, it'd be really nice to connect with you. So maybe a word, you might already have an intention for the year ahead. Um, Blessed, oh beautiful, oh that's a great start Leslie, <laughs> gorgeous, staying in my love lane, brilliant, well done Katie, feeling high vibes, Ali Hutchinson, gorgeous, love new relationship, ooh Nikki, tell me more, yay, carrying a little unsettled, Sharon, visible, love that. Yes, it's time. Ellie is tired today. Ali, my word for 2023 is flow, beautiful. Transformation, lots of self-care. Yes, yes, yes. Confused, thankful, hopeful. Lizzie, feeling wonderfully aware, gorgeous. Excited for the future, yes, love, positive, bloom. I love that word, bloom. Beautiful. Daring, Anna. <laughs> Sovereignty, Julia, love that. Gorgeous, Christy. Yeah. Nourishment and self-care, yep. Theme for the year, oops, healthy mind, body, spirit. Yeah, that's mine. My mine is fun for this year, actually. Word for 2023 is trust. I um heard a really nice thing actually the other day, which I'll just share. Recovery. Oh, you've had Lurgy Yaki living in more joy. Claire, love that. Grounded Sarah, amazing. Self-care and fun. Jen, yeah, we're on the same page there. <laughs> overburdened right now working towards balance balance is a good word for this year actually also yeah beautiful gorgeous yeah um yeah really um I heard a, a thing which I thought was it was probably going to be quite apt for this year because um this year ahead is um is is a little uh, a little bit it's it's, it's kind of like it's going to be a really spiritual year but it's also it's also going to be about um like how we carry our spirituality into like day-to-day -day life so rather than what has been all like woo woo spiritual it's like like how do we you know how because it's all right been on yoga might have been really chilled and then going and telling someone to piss off in the street because the parks in your place you know so if we're not carrying it out off the mat like you know it's not um it's not so great so and uh, personally I've just been on quite a lot a, a sort of three month journey in in shadow quite deep in shadow as well and um 
And really all I've all I've had to do is sort of cling on by my fingertips and trust. It's literally felt like that. I don't know if anyone else has felt like that as well. It's just like been clinging on. And um I've kind of come to this place now to just surrender trust. So this this um this real trust and surrender upward. So I loved that little phrase, just trust and surrender upward. So just send it up, hand it over. You know, it's it's all, everything is working out just perfectly. Um, but yeah, this trust and surrender upward. So I thought that was really nice, um, nice little um, kind of way of thinking, of thinking about things. So is anyone, would anyone like to share anything they want to release or is any, is everybody pretty good about all of that? Um, oh, really, Amy? Yeah. The top that said trust on it. Yeah, trust. It's a, it's a really, I think it's a really potent word, isn't it, at the moment? Um, trusting. Because, um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's really good, though. Sharon. Can I just share, I said exactly the same in my um, space holding today about yeah. that, Andrea, yeah. about not just living that spiritual life over here and then your human life here. That's it's it. got to come into this oh, yin yang right. integrated. So, yeah, it's lovely when we all come together because we're all on the same page. Aren't we? It's yeah, fabulous. completely. It totally is feeling uneven yes yeah. because I feel like um also that like um harmonize balance all of the, this is all very very feels very um present like at the moment it's always about harmonizing balancing integrating you know bringing everything in together and uh Deirdre did I see you yeah, it was, it was interesting because I just went on a big walk about an hour or two ago and uh, Neil, my husband and I, he, he actually said to me, I need to integrate my health and well-being. Just exactly what you're saying, you know, this kind of, not just being healthy in the body, but yeah. in the mind and in the spirit. Yeah, and it's it. certainly a theme, so it just must be in the air. It, it, yeah, it, it, it definitely is. So... Um, right so what I'd, another thing that I just learned today also is um, using the word love so uh, like Catherine here is just put in I release stress clutter lack depth guilt and unbalance so that's amazing internal struggle letting go of doubt so what I'd really like to do and Harrison Hello, I haven't seen on Harrison for ages. Um, yeah, like Anna saying, like, what would love do? This is such a great thing. So what we're looking at now is um, rather that, because this is another shift, a little bit of a shift as well, is about using the word love, like way more. So I would, so rather than saying I will get out of debt, for example, I will get out of debt. I want to get out of debt. Um, I want to make lots of money. Instead of using that, what, what is really helpful is to start using the word I love. So using the word I love to pay off my debt, I love to make lots of money. Love apparently will really, really manifest the quickest of anything so rather than saying I want to or I desire to all of that is saying it's not here yet it's not you know it's the lack so it's coming from lack so looking at I love and using I love um in everything that we're wanting to create is is going to be really powerful like if we're all doing it and we're all manifesting like crazy in the love lane, this will be great. <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. Christmas, I can do as I please. Yeah, I love that. What would love do? Yeah, balancing human and spiritual. Because thing is with that as well, 
and I think this is another thing that's quite big in the spiritual community at the moment, is if we're too much in the spiritual, it's really, really unbalancing for the human. The, you know, the, the human gets gets really tired with it. I find it's really draining. So it's really good to find a human thing that you can do to balance that. Like I do a Netflix. Netflix is my thing, you know, if, I, if I've been doing um, spiritual stuff, so Netflix. So integration, bringing it all in together. Um, yeah. Have widened in relationships, yeah, yeah, confused, yeah. Well, it's choosing, isn't it, as well? So choosing and loving. This is this is a really great, great way of, of looking at things. Brilliant. All right. So if you have something that you would like to release, Netflix is mine too. I honestly, I never had a telly for years, never, never had a telly for lots and lots of years. And, um, you know, so like, like, no, I'm not having a telly. I'm in my spiritual, I'm not having it. I'm not having it in my house. Da, 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 da. And then I think, I don't know, I can't remember why, but for some reason I ended up watching a, um, a Netflix on, on a little computer screen and um, thinking, oh my God, this is actually really great. This is what I'm like, this is the balance. So again, when we're looking at balance, you know, balance, what do we need? you know, to, to balance the spiritual, you know, because it honestly is very draining when we're always up there in, in this realm. And there's not, you know, we're not, it's not integrated and it's not, it's not grounded. Um, Disney Fest, Mary Poppins. Brilliant. Chrissy, are you telling me something? No, no, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So look at that also. So what we're going to do tonight, I'm going to do a little bit of journaling. And um, so what I'm going to, what I'd like us to do is we're going to look at what is we, we, we want in an area and then what is the grounded action. So we're going to look at like what it is we want to pull in, say, for example, in our body and what is a grounded action that we can put into place for that. So we're going to do that a little bit. So what I'd like to do is just have a little, get, bring your water in and just have a little feel into something, um, anything that you don't want to carry forward. So it might be an old um, an old thought pattern. It might be, um, you know, it might be a fear. It might be, um, you know, like just something that you've been, like it might be old stagnant, like it's just something old and stagnant that you that you're just done with and you don't you don't you just don't want to carry it forward um it might be something from the past it might be you know like um losing independent you know amanda is um fear of losing independence um but but you I, I guess you only lose your independence if you allow that to happen i would imagine mm -hmm. so you know um again the more that you're in your love lane, I guess the you know you you have your boundaries are set pretty well <laughs> usually. So we're going to use our middle finger, which is the priestess finger, and you can use whichever one you you're drawn to. So this is um, sometimes used of um, um, in my blessings when I when I, we do little water things with it. So I'm just going to pop your, your middle finger, just let it skim over the top of your water. So if you just get that in place. And water is a beautiful element um, for release, it's, and it's a recorder. So it will record any um, any energy. Now, if if we are in if we think about the body, you know, the body is made up of 65, 70% water and it's recording everything. So if we are self-talking not nice to ourselves, then our bodies are recording it all the time. And that's not, you know, that's not great. So um, so if we, we're going to um, let this water take whatever it is that we want to release for ourselves, I'm going to do a little... 
um, like a little blessing for this little uh, release um, chant for this. So if you want to just close your eyes and then I want you just to bring in something that you want to release. So it said that like, and it's a really high percentage, so like 96%. Our thoughts, beliefs, beliefs, and the way we act out are actually not ours. They've actually been programmed onto us from other people. So a lot of the stuff that we carry, a lot of the things that we habitually do, um, you know, reactions have all been like in response to something often somebody else has done. So you're going to bring the, your other hand onto your heart because, again, we always release with love um, because that is the best. Love is the best. So just bring your, um, again, just close your eyes, bring your awareness inward and just drop into that beautiful heart space. And then just bring to mind, bring to your heart something. It might just be some, an annoyance. It might just be something that somebody's pissed you off or I clear away the past, all that is heavy and all that is not mine. I feel the freedom that remains in my heart, in my spirit and in my soul. I am light. I am aligned. I am radiant in my being. I clear away the past, all that is heavy and all that is not mine. I feel the freedom that remains in my heart in my spirit and in my soul. I am light, I am aligned, I am radiant in my being. I clear away the past, all that is heavy and all that is not mine. I feel the freedom that remains in my heart, in my spirit and in my soul. I am light, I am aligned, I am radiant in my being. And it is done. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm just taking your um, hand now just over your heart. And then afterwards you can um, offer your water back into Mother Earth, or you can freeze it. So you can also um, just freeze that in. So just letting your water take that, whatever it is to be cleared from your heart. And then just bringing in a word or quality to replace that energy. And it might be the opposite, like um, just the full opposite of that, whether it's, you know, trust or love or whatever it is. And then just breathe in, just let it fill your heart space. And just allow that quality just to move down through your body and down into the earth and send it down into the earth. This is our earth needs it as well. That's so whatever that lovely quality is. Okay. All right, so hopefully that's cleared a little bit. If you need to do a bit more, I'm sorry, my cat is, um, for those of you that don't, haven't been in a circle before, my cat <laughs> always shows up whenever it's circle. She's just 
Sache, Mel. <lacht> Love life. Fair of an outcast. Fair of out isolation. Okay. Come on in. All right. Now, just tell me, would you like to dance and move your body before you journal or do you want to journal and then move your body so tell me who would like to move first oh lovely some gorgeous journal first yep yep journal first yes yes brilliant let's journal and then we're going to move the energy i like to i always like to dance a bit in my circles because i like to bring the energy energy up to the surface and then dance it out a little bit so it's Quite nice. Brilliant. All right. So grab your journals. So we're going to do um, anything to delay moving. I think you might enjoy moving. <laughs> it might be nice to move. So we're going to do a little bit of journaling, uh, move, and then I'm going to just do um, a little um, soul um, like journey with you as well. All right. So Let's feel a little bit into moving forward into a brand new year. Very exciting new year, I think, as well. Um, now, apparently, um, energetically, we've got, we've still, I think we've still got a little bit of tricky energy up until um, March. So... So you're feeling like that as well. Um, so yeah, so I think we've still got that, you know, a little bit of um, I think the energy is still going to be a little bit funky up until I, I think it was something like six months ago, around about the 13th of March, it's going to change a little bit. Um, so I, as we are uh, like now at this time of year, I always think about it a bit like um you know, this when the seed is just germinating. So it's ju we're just in that um, time where, you know, we might start, yeah, revolution in mid-March. Yeah, I, I, you can feel it, can't you? It's really interesting, yeah. Um, so we're in this uh, sort of germination time now. I think that's what it's called. But it's just like, you know, what seeds do we like, you know, what do we want to bring forward? And... I always like like to think about our um like you know if if we've got ideas and things that are like you know starting to come up a little bit what what often happens is we then get this other little story that goes on and says yeah but you'll never you'll never be able to do that though you'll never be able to do that or you know and it and it kind of gets shut down so I really want you to feel a little bit more into everything is possible, anything is possible. And if you're getting little niggles and little um, ideas to create something, it's because it's true. <laughs> it, like, it's true and it needs to happen and it needs to come forward. Yeah. So if you are, follow it. You know, I always say, like, follow follow what excites you. Follow what lights you up. Like, however crack is it from a might feel, just, just follow it. Just go with it. It's great. It's exciting. All right. So as we move forward, so um, the garage conversion. Is that what you're bringing forward, Amanda, for next year? Nice. So in for this next year, and I always like to um I'm gonna start off with the with your body because without in in the, we were taught in our spiritual um training I'm amazing, um that there are there are like four pillars of life. Now the first pillar of life really should be our health. Because without our health, we're knackered, literally. So for your body this year, I'll tell you what I've just done. Um, oh, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, I do feel better. I've been through a, 
it, I tell you, in a really dark hole for a little while. But yeah, I'm feeling back as well. Thank you. Um, so I, I have just actually committed to, I'm paid for, I've never done this before in my life, I have to say. I've just paid for a year's membership at, at this, a spa down the road. Now, um, this feels like really like it's, you know, it's quite indulgent. But yeah, if I can go down, like it, it was 400, just over 400 quid for a year. And I can go any day. And, and honestly, if you've got a spa nearby, they're really struggling at the moment. So if you can afford it, and you feel like, you know, that that would be really nice to support another business as well. Um, and if you do it off peak, like, so it's sort of giving me like a year of, oh my God, like twice a week probably is all I'll be able to do. But it gives me an incentive to get off my ass, get down the road, go do a swim, you know, get in the jacuzzi and just have a nice time. So I think, you know, when we talk about embodying, you know, how, you know, because really for me, um, my own understanding about you know being heart led living through the heart um living in love lane living in flow is about being relaxed you know being able to be relaxed have all of your channels open so that spirit can come through fully like um you know uh Oh, brilliant. Well done. Katie's joined a spa as well. Yeah. So look, check out your local spas. Honestly, it's it's quite a thing. Um, so yeah, so I've just done that. So 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 for this year, I want you to just contemplate. I would like my body to feel. So this year, I would like my body to feel. Now, what I'm seeing a lot of just recently is about. So if you are in your wild woman years, let you know, perimenopausal, hardcore exercise is really bad for you. <laughs> the same now, like it's a it's quite a thing that if you are doing a lot of um really hard exercise your body will actually quite easily put on weight because it goes into a bit of a stress response because it's already dealing with quite a lot going on so you bit better to do like weight like weight trait weight bearing that sort of thing is is often a little bit better for your body yeah belly dancing yes pole dancing Balance again, yeah, and bad for your gut. Thank you, Ali. Yeah. So moving your hips, getting your pelvis moving, 100 percent amazing for menopause. That in fact, I started, that's why I started doing belly dance actually, was because of because of going into menopause menopause. Um yeah, body balance, tai chi. I've just started doing qigong again. I love qigong. If you if you if you've not done it, I'll put a little uh, put class some classes, I think in the in the group so in 2023 i would like my body to feel and what is your grounded action so what are you gonna do about it because it's all right if we've got it in our heads and going oh, i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that but then we don't do anything about it so you know really commit to yourself commit to yourself because you only get one human <laughs> in this lifetime you know so let's love her a bit better and you know, look after her. Yes, yeah, Sarah, you did a load of stuff, didn't you? Oh, nice, Anna. Tango in, I love that. I haven't done body balance before. Maybe I'll check it out. So I'd like my body, body to feel and, and the grounded action. And if you want to, if you want to get that witnessed in this here. Put it in that chat box and we can all witness it. Starting tango on Tuesday. Yay. Brilliant. Yeah. So if you want to get it witnessed, stick it in the group. Now, what I've just been um, looking at is, um, so I want my work to feel, I want to work light. So this is, this is quite a big thing. 
Oh, right. I'll have a look at that then. Yeah. So I want to I want to work light and my word for this year is fun. So everything that I am doing, whether it's work, whatever it is, it's how can I make it fun and easeful? Because a lot of the time and actually it was. Um, if you if you follow in the Mayan um, calendar, it's actually Blue Eagle Wave Spell has just started today. And the blue eagle wave spell is, you know, the eagle represents this higher, you know, taking the higher vantage point, the higher, you know, seeing things from that higher, that higher place. So if we, you know, if things are feeling a bit heavy, I think it's really good to look at it as um, if, if it's feeling heavy, often it's because it's often out of alignment. <laughs> It's, it's it, your soul is maybe not happy with it you know you, your soul is trying to pull you back and, and it takes a lot of energy to live out of alignment so um yeah absolutely relaxing before bed massage your feet that's really good to do before bed so I would like my work to feel and then what is the grounded action so I would like my work to feel and what is a grounded action? Because a lot of the times as well is is our you know it's how how we see things as well. So if we can look at it a little bit, yeah, really good. Because I think probably most of us hopefully got a bit got self-care pretty much down by now I think a lot of us have I think yeah effective easeful ease how that's another thing actually also is um yes I'm also been doing having coaching I've just signed up, up to a really amazing program at the moment that I've just started it's really really amazing um so in any situations where am I choosing stress or where am I choosing ease or where can I choose more ease so that we'll yeah less harassed more easeful I love that because it's really you know you it really you know how can I simplify how can I uncomplicate because we complex and it's the head that does that just complicates stuff all the time empowerment yeah effortless and fun yeah 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 less overwhelming yeah yeah ease and intuitive because the more relaxed we are it I think um what I've thought I've learned a lot just recently is when our head is driving, it's really knackering, like it's really tiring. When our heart is leading, which is really, this is this year where we're, we're heading out, is to be really heart led. So yeah, perfectionism, no, it's like, no, let's just be, you know, imperfectly perfect and, you know, just just live from heart like like literally just showing up and, and and showing others so it's all right to do that as well um because when we're relaxed our intuition just completely is on fire um yeah so yeah I want my work to feel then and this is the this is one I've been working with all of last year I would like my finances to feel and grounded action. So again, with, with money and, um, and finances, really look at money mindset. It, it's an interesting one because actually money is the same vibration as love. And it's, it's an energy, it's energy like everything else. And we seem to have cut it off somehow how many of us how many of us are um you know I mean are really buying into this consciousness at the moment of lack 
Like nobody's got any money. Nobody's going to pay for that. Then people haven't got any money. You know, I, I, I just feel like if we can really start to see, it, it, I'm going to do a bit more on money actually, but it, it feels as if it's separate. It's like a separate thing, but it's it's completely integrated in into love. It's it's that as well. And what I'd say is also, if you haven't already, um, read or listen to the book Love Money, Money Loves You. This is an a amazing book and it's an amazing movement um, by a lady called Sarah McCrum. People are spending. People are. People do have money, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, look at that, Sarah McCrum. She's got two books. If you burn out Queen as well, if we burn out Queens in the house. Um, she's also got an amazing book called Energy on Demand, which is another book about relaxing, simplifying, uncomplicating. This is what it's all about. This is what this is what money is saying. I'll put it in the group. So it's called Love Money. Money loves you. Now she's also got, and I'm going to do this actually when I've paid for this thing that I'm on at the moment. She does a year um, course with this. So if you if you do have if you have if you have money blocks, if you're a money, you know if you if you've got money blocks, this would be amazing to do. Um, I'm definitely going to do this myself because I've definitely got money blocks, but I've also got ancestral money blocks I don't think they're only my blocks I think that you know because for a lot of us we have ancestral stuff as well that's come through our families um intensity yeah flow beautiful I love that word flow it's beautiful I've just been watching some actually as well uh just, just uh, today and she was talking about um a, a alignment and how like when we're on a spiritual um journey we're, we're sort of we're all striving to get into this alignment place where everything's easy and it's easeful and all of this and he was saying like it's never easy <laughs> it's just the journey deeper into yourself and you're just learning more and more and more about yourself, but it's never going to be, you're never going to find that place of alignment where you just stay there all the time because it's always a bit more. There's always a little bit more shadow to integrate. Yeah, lovely. Because when we have that, you know, when we when we have got that, um, you know, the finance thing down and we've got that, you know, we, we can, can see it as... Um, you know, as flow, as energy, you know, as energy, and if we're following our heart and we're doing what we love, we enjoy every moment of it. Then love has to flow, and then money has to flow. It it just has to. It's it's just it's a law of the universe. Um. Yeah, well, that's that's a big one, isn't it? Saying yes when we want to say no, and saying no. When we want to say yes, I definitely explore that one because, you know, where do we say no when we actually want to say yes? Yeah, ancestral money blocks. Yeah, massive. All right. So for those of you um, that were talking about love, relationship love, um, I would like my love life to feel and a grounded action for that. So I would like my love life to feel and a grounded action for that. I think the thing with money, and if you read this book, you'll learn a lot about that. Because um, again, with the re relaxation thing, if money is energy and it flows, if we are in a contracted state of fear around money, then money can't even get in. It can't flow. It just can't get in because it's an energy. So the more relaxed we can be around it and just trust and surrender upward, 
you know, the more it will just, it'll just be, it's there, it's going to be there. It, it's, it is there. It's all there already. It's never, you're never apart from it. It's, it's, it's energy. You never, you're never away from it. It's, it's, it's about actually, a lot of it is about claiming it. It's, it's actually about claiming it. So I would like my spirit and soul to feel and then what is the grounded action for that? Please make time for your spirit as well. Yeah, well, that's a, that's what I'm working on at the moment, Amanda. And the thing is, what, what my coach says is that you, if you want to increase your prices, you, you have to be the energy that will, will that is ready to receive. So actually, if you're wanting to increase your prices, what you need to do is to be more open to receive more. So be more, just more open to receive more. Because what happens is often is we want to put our prices up and we contract really fast because we go into fear because we think we think people won't come. I, I have been telling myself I'm a wealthy woman. Yeah, honestly, I tell you what, that is that was one of the biggest mantras, right? So this is a great one. If you've got money stuff, I want you to stick a little thing on your mirror that you go to every morning and it says, this is what a wealthy woman looks like. I tell you now, it absolutely was a game changer for me. Last We did it in last year, didn't we, in, in Lakshmi. This is what a wealthy woman looks like. And you want to walk around saying that all the time. This is what a wealthy woman looks like. And it just it just opens it up. It just oh, it's amazing. Actually, people have actually been giving me more money than what I've been asking for. And one person said last week, your treatment's a really good value for money. So I'll, I'm, and give me this and said, oh, I'll get some change. I said, no, no, it's fine. So they're already giving me more money and I'm not even asking for it. Do it. Just do it. Thing is, I mean, the thing is also is that uh, this is something that I'm just, just been really aware of at the moment is that, right, we look at um, energy and energy is it always wants to expand your soul always wants to expand and money is energy so money always wants to increase so if we're doing work and undercharging it's going to knacker you you're going to feel tired because the alignment is not right it's not aligned you know you you um the the energy has to be aligned so that the output is aligned with the input so if you're giving a lot of energy out and you're not charging enough for it, it it's misaligned. So, you know, if energy, it, you know, money is energy and it wants to expand and it wants to increase, then actually prices should be going up every, you know, every so often, really. And also we're quite often trying to work it out in our head. You know, sometimes it might be good to come down to our heart and say, like, like, you know, what what should, you know, what do I charge for that? What is the price on that? What would be fun? What would be a fun price to put on that? I remember somebody saying that to me once and thinking, well, that's a bit weird. But yeah, what would be fun to charge? You know, make fun, like I've started doing double numbers and stuff. It's just, it's just different and it's fun. So what would be fun? So spirit and soul, grounded action. I would like my health to feel. And what is the grounded action for that? I would like my health to feel. And what is the grounded action for that? How many of us are um, having relaxation daily? Have we all got this down? Yeah, brilliant. Not quite. Yeah, get the balance. 
definitely little relaxations are good has everyone got an oracle deck actually as well if you haven't you might want to just grab one and then um i would like my energy to feel and a grounded action i would like to my energy to feel yes sure i will Now we're going to do um, a three card story. So um, if you, when you when you've done that, if you if you've got some an oracle deck and you want to just give it a shuffle, and then if you haven't done this before, we're going to um, take out three cards and just place them face down. What was the last one, Andrea? Um, I would like my energy to feel and grounded action. And I'd also, um, if you get chance as well, just have a have a little feel into the stuff that you're doing at mo at moment. So there was a, a teacher shared something with me around um, what altars are you dedicating to? So like have a feeling to like what are your daily practices? What are you doing? What uh, You know, and it might be like work. It might be in your spiritual practice. It might be um, in your, you know, your exercise routines, your food. You know, are you doing the same stuff all the time that you've always done? Are you still aligned with it? Is it still aligned with your energy? Does anything need to change? I always keep looking at this. Does anything need to change? So, you know, um, your energy is, you can't really be doing the same stuff all the time because it, it, that isn't how energy works. Your energy is changing all the time. So what you did a year ago, what you did a month ago, might not still be aligned with your energy now. So, you know, I mean, actually, as women, we're changing like second to second, never mind anything else. But um, so, you know, looking at like like what what is working for you and what isn't so don't be frightened of letting go of stuff and doing something different if it's not working for you anymore because if you're feeling um tired and you know a, a bit like I always feel like it's like it's a pull in my gut it's like you know like that heavy tight gut feeling when you, uh, something's just not right something's just not working it, it, I'm doing something that I don't want to do so definitely you know have a little look at that and because sometimes just removing one thing and maybe replacing it with something fresh and new will just shift the energy might just change the energy a little bit so definitely look at that for those of you that are maybe feeling um you know if you those of you that are feeling a bit heavy or um you know, that's, you know, stagnant energy because, you know, maybe I've been doing it forever and I should just keep doing it. And, you know, maybe you just need to change it. It maybe just needs a bit of a shake up. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I just have a little feeling to that. I'll do things different ways around, you know, as well. That's quite a good thing to do. So we're going to do a three card story. So I want you to start off this story in your journal. Um, Once upon a time. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the energy of the moon as well. So once upon a time there was a nourished woman. Hmm. 
who is learning to trust and rest. <laughs> you can put anything in there, actually. So you can put love and trust herself, or you can put anything in there. And then she. And then you're going to turn your first card over. And hopefully you've got a card that you can kind of just read off the picture. So I just want you just to not look at the book so much. Um, the, the best cards for this are, I'll put the, I'll put these ones I've pulled. So if you don't have cards that are easy to sort of read, I'll put some in the chat box. So the first card is Reflection, Healing Transformation. So you're going to continue your story with this as in as with the card as inspiration so that's card one so you write that and then um and then when you when you've sort of written all you want to write there then you're just going to turn the next card over I'm not sure I really understand what I'm supposed to be doing at this bit, Andrea. All right, lovely. So I've got as, I've got as far as she, and yeah. I've turned my card over. Yeah. Um, and you said sort of like, and write down what it means, but I don't understand how that fits with what I'm writing down. Okay, so what is your first card? Communication. Sorry? Communication. Communication. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> so, okay. so, so you, so around that word, so around communication, you're gonna, um, kind of, you're gonna create a story that fits, that follows that first intro. Does that make? Does, does make that? Okay. Make, so you might, I don't know, put um, once upon a time there was a nourish woman who was who was learning to trust and rest. She um, opened up to communication to ask for her needs to be met. Does that make, yeah? Yes, sense. yeah, 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 thank you. Repeat the question. Question? Um, Emily, have you worked that out? No, that was fine, sorry, my head was, I was still journaling. Oh, it's all right, don't worry. <laughs> Has everyone got that idea now? So if you want to use these, so there's three cards here. We've got um, reflection, hair, and bliss. So if anybody wants to use those, you can use them as well. So you just write a little story to yourself. Can I share mine, Andrea? You can check, yeah. yeah. I can't believe what came out. I'm using the same deck, that, which is Nature's Whispers. And from what I said earlier about confused, actually, that's about relationships. Yeah. <laughs> so I've just ended in another relationship. <laughs> and um, the first card that came out was um, Let Love Be Your Beacon. Yeah, and the second one was shift your energy, which is what you've just been talking about, and the yeah. third one was love matters. Yeah, wow, so that's just unbelievable. Do you want to share your story? Well, it was just um, once upon a time, there was a nourished woman who was learning to trust, rest, and, and love. She let love be her beacon and shifted her energy, and she learned that love mattered. Yeah. And I often don't feel worthy of love, so I mean that's just perfect. Can't believe it. Well, I should journal a bit more around that. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
definitely journal a bit like I've just um I, I actually I'm just going to add to that because I've just come through and come across another really great model um it's just called a rare rare model so when you come up with something like that so you I am um you know I'm feeling unworthy of being loved all right so you recognize it so you recognize it you know it's it's come up it's come to the surface it's a shadow come to the surface acknowledge it acknowledge that you are not the belief because it is just a belief then reframe and restructure it so then question it like you know why why is that true not true you know why why you know is it true actually is it true is actually you know quite a good one to work with and then create embody a new belief so it's called rare so it's recognize acknowledge reframe and reassure so when you reframe and reassure you you are being the nurturing parent so you're because it's often it it often is coming up from a, a in a child wound. I, I know it is <laughs> yeah, the wounded unhealed child so um you know reassure the little girl you know she is lovable or you know whatever you need to do for that and then embody a new belief so so you so then your mantra might be I am lovable I am worthy of love you know so and then you just keep repeating it keep repeating. because it's not about seeing the um you know it's not about seeing the shadow as been bad because it's not bad it's 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 often just our little girl that's you know that's been hurt and it's it's just you know so that that was I, I, I said that I needed more time to heal myself and he said to me love heals <laughs> yeah well it, love does heal love is it that's it, that's yeah. it. yeah our last two steps so reframe and reassure so you um you, you reframe the shadow you know whatever it is into like are you question like question like is it true um Oh no, sorry, yeah. And then embody a new belief. Yeah, so rare. It's really, really lovely practice. And I th and that actually is really um so so basically what, what's just happened recently is um I've gone into a, a high level coaching container, which was which was ringing uh, like shifting my energy expanding my energy duh, 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 duh. but so it's bringing up a lot of shadow but there was nothing offered to to move and integrate that shadow so that shadow was there and I and I didn't know what to do with it um this is a new this is a, a diff, different person that I'm working with at the moment because if you are finding like you know that, that you've got stuff coming up and if you're on a spiritual journey you will have because you can't not have there will be shadow coming up it's really good to have things that are going to help because actually when you're very in the depths of it it's really hard it can be really hard so you know either reach out and speak to somebody do I think that journaling is like one of the best ways to you know if you're getting because actually that little um you know that that little dark that that darkness there's a gift in it it's it's a it's a little bit of unhealed you know it's 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 a there's a gift so definitely explore it because there's a there's a gift in it for sure embody our oh embody a new belief yeah so create a little a mantra um that is the opposite of the belief and you know just keep repeating it all right has anyone got anything they'd like to share 
Monday. Happy Monday for ages. Are you all right, Chick? Ah, it's so nice to see you. Has anyone got anything to share? I'd, I'd quite like to share if that's okay. Yeah, I'd love that. So um, last year, I, I kind of alluded to it in one of the comments that I made in that I had what I would describe as my great unravelling, <laughs> mm. which at the time was really difficult, um, but now feels like a bit of a gift, really, because it's given me the space to do something different and reconnect. Many, many years ago, I was much more connected to my own soul and my spirit, and then things changed. I got into a different career, and I, I work in a very negative area if you like um and just felt that I needed to do more things for me hence being part of this absolutely amazing circle tonight wow. um but before Christmas I had an opportunity through work to sign up for a creative writing course that's being run by Hull University um and that is well out of my comfort zone um and thinking blimey if it's anything like writing stories when I was a kid this this could be interesting mm. but the cards that I've turned over this evening are just it just lines up with that <laughs> completely um communication focus and alliance and, you know, my story, the, the journal that, I, that I've written was once upon a time, there was a nourished woman who was learning to trust and rest. She realized that she would stories to tell and others needed to hear and that she needed to listen and hear them, their stories in return. To most benefit from this, she gave it her focus and attention. Now is the time to make her mark, but only if she allows herself to trust. She understands that all alliances need to be positive and that she will attract help from people who have greater wisdom. Amazing. So it's what, sort of like... What an insight. What an insight. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. And, and you know, the things that you were talking about earlier when you opened the circle, there were two cards that I picked um from my oracle pack last night and one was forgiveness and the other one was stillness and that really resonated with what you were saying earlier so um this feels like the the right place to be in the right time and yeah it's, it's very very exciting yeah it is exciting it is exciting and that you know I am I'm really excited because you know I I've had this feeling that this you know for for the for the for for women you know that uh, it, this year is just going to be about stepping into the light and claiming what is ours claiming it it's ours <laughs> so yeah amazing thank you gorgeous what a lovely insight anyone else Sharon I'll just share this also <laughs> you go sweetie go no, sure. Sure. All right. Okay. Quickie. Yeah, absolutely. So today, when I was in my space, and people know this, my crew know, I always use the Magdalene cards. Yeah. Would any come out for me today? Would they bugger? <laughs> so it's knowing as well when that needs to be just put aside. Yeah. And I just picked up these Angels and Abundance cards today um and they have just flown out and i just wanted to share this one card because i think it's not just for me but it's something that i've been working with as well and as well as you andrea but god is your source and that's not just god in the religious sense but the creator yeah so everything you need is supplied by the infinite source of god and your faith opens the doors to receive in God, there is no lack or limitation. Rather, there is plenty of abundance for us all to share. So that's going on my altar because I think that that counterbalances where, all, where humanity are feeling right now. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Beautiful, Sharon. Thank you. Bridget. Hi. I, I wasn't actually going to share, but it just seems that I need to share, really. 
Okay. My first car was the same as Amanda's card, and it was um, Let Love Be Your Beacon. Wow. And my next card, which is what you've just said, it's um, Stag Spirit, Leadership, Standing Your Sovereignty. Yeah. And my next card, which is so appropriate for me, is absolutely New Beginnings. I start my new job tomorrow. Oh, wow. Good luck tomorrow. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. So my story, um, basically, once upon a time, there was a nourished woman who was learning to trust and rest. And she let love be her beacon, only doing what filled her with love. And when feeling challenged, she asked, what would love do? She stood in her sovereignty, making authenticity guide her forward in love, being genuine in everything she did, putting love for herself to the forefront doing only what was right for her, no longer doing for others in resentment. She would feel that she could, she could feel that she had ended her last chapter. Now she was stepping into new beginnings. Amazing, fantastic, thank you, gorgeous. Sarah. Which Sarah? Do you mean yeah. me, Andrea? Yeah. <laughs> There's a few of us on tonight. <laughs> I got oh. fantastic cards, really great cards, actually. I got dedication, joy and creativity, oh, which yeah. were really kind of, you know, I'm working quite hard at the minute um, yeah. to bring forward a, an offering um, myself, and it just felt fab. So my little story went, um, once upon a time, there was, there was a nourished woman who was learning to trust and rest herself. She dedicated herself to her mission, and in doing so, it brought her, brought, it brought her joy home, and, 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 and she embraced the blessing of her life. She let her creativity flow, and she seized the day. Mm. Well, that just felt like a really nice one. Fantastic, yeah, really positive, brilliant, love that. Great, so let's, has anyone else got anything to share quickly? I'm going to invite you to move your body. So, oh, Bridget is just showing her card deck there for Ali. Sacred Forest. Oh, wow, that's a lovely deck. I've not seen that one. Mm. It is beautiful. Yeah, I, I love it. It's got a little meditation at the beginning of each one as well. Oh, Have you got that, Ali? I love that. Sacred Forest. It's Denise Lynn. Beautiful. Mm, gorgeous. All right. So you can turn your cameras off and just go wiggle your body a bit. Because I just want to wiggle the energy a bit. Um, so just find a place in your room where you feel comfy. And then we're just going to have a little, little wiggle, a little bit of movement. And then I'm going to bring you into a little journey. Um, so just find a place you feel comfy in. And just taking a couple of nice deep breaths and see what to put on. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, just have a couple of nice deep breaths. And I just want you to just dance some loving. Let's just dance some loving. Desire 
arms around you Honey, I can stand up and face the world Let me tell you your love Keep holding me Higher, higher and higher I said your love Keep holding me yourself now back into your space hopefully you shifted and had a little bit of a wiggle a bit of a jiggle yeah right so if you need to do a bit of clearing off because if you've brought a bit of energy up and you want to just clear it off to the ground do that as well um I'll just see whatever you need Leslie oh are you gonna say something Leslie oh I've just dropped 
Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Wrong. Uh, I was turning the video on by mistake. Oh, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Yeah, love that. Despite earlier reluctance, brilliant. It's always good to move your body. Energy needs to move always. So if you are, you know, if you're bringing up energy, if you're moving stuff, if you're bringing stuff up to the surface through journaling or whatever, it needs to move. It needs to be integrated. So um, stick on a track that you love. Get your body moving. Dance is one of the best ways to shift. How freaky is this as well? So about 10, 11 years ago, I joined Jenny Reed's choir. Oh, Jenny, the... Jenny, Jenny. Yeah. Jen. yeah. The first song that I learned by heart that I sang with that choir was Higher and Higher. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's a favourite. Is Jen in tonight, actually? I don't think so. I haven't seen her. Jen, no, she's not in tonight, no, she's not. But uh, yeah, uh, Jen, Jen, she often is. So she might be in next time. Fantastic. Oh, well, all synchronicities, you see. All roads lead home. <laughs> all right, brilliant. Oh, you're welcome, Ali. Have a lovely night's sleep. I'll see you tomorrow for a natter as well. So yeah. All right, so just get yourselves nice and comfy. You can lay down if you need to. I'm just going to take you into your soul and just see what your soul's vision is for the for 2023. So just get yourselves comfy. Let's say you can lie down if you if you want to. And then just gently draw in. So just bring your energy inward, close your eyes. And take a nice deep breath. And then as you breathe out, just follow your breath down. So it's just as if it's just dropping down. And again, just sending your roots down. And just follow that spiral down through the floor. Down through earth rock down through underground rivers healing waters and all the way down to the heart of mother earth and then again just really feeling into the quality that you feel you need right now and again you can just draw that quality up through your roots And just feeling the lovely energy, just really nourishing all the parts of you, all the tender places that need a little bit of extra care. And then just letting your weight down, just feeling really present for yourself, holding yourself in love. And then imagine above your head, so just bringing your awareness up above your head, above the crown. And imagine there a giant ball of light above your head. And imagine a stream of light traveling down through your crown of your head. And just imagine yourself being filled with radiant light and energy. The energy of consciousness is like a white sparkling energy. You just feel it pouring down through your head. Down through the central channel of your body. And then as you bring your awareness to the center of your heart where both energies meet, so earth energy, and sky energy, consciousness, the energy of consciousness meeting and mingling in the heart space. Just imagine the heart as a cave. Imagine it in the yogic tradition, it's called, it is called the cave of the heart. And it's said to be where the Ishta Devata lives, resides as goddess energy. 
But just imagine this cave is filled with the most beautiful crystals and jewels that shine in the light of a thousand suns. It is said that your soul has the power of the light of a thousand suns, the light of infinite summers resides there. So this part of your soul that is ancient and wise, this part that knows, deeply, deeply knows what is best for you. So as you invite this part of yourself to step forward, this deep, wise part of yourself, as you connect with the energy of love, the energy of creative consciousness, what is your soul's deepest prayer for you at this moment in time, for this year ahead? What is your soul's deepest prayer for you just now? And just connect with your breath for a few moments, just closing your eyes and just relaxing. What would your soul love for you to know right now? And maybe a picture begins to form. I just want you to notice where you are in this picture. What you're wearing. What do your eyes tell you? How are you holding yourself? How do you feel? So just take it all in. And then invite your soul to give you a flower. Any flower. And as you picture that flower, what colour is it? What wisdom does it have to share? What quality is it here to share, to invite? in you? What does it invoke in you? What does this soul flower represent to you? What medicine does it want to share with you? And then draw that medicine in, draw that energy in from the flower with your next in breath. And then as you breathe out, just imagine that you ground it, you just draw it down through your body and integrate it down into earth. And then just taking a moment to really thank your soul for the connection that you've made. And just deepening your breath. And you might want to write something. You might have had a message or something that you want to write down. So just take a moment to do that. And if there was a specific flower, then you might want to look that up. Mine um, was the gerbera, I think it's um, pronounced, the orange uh, one. Because it may have a message for you and it might have a quality and a um, just some something to share and uh, be great to um, add a few flower pictures into the uh, live magic group if you if you uh, found something there All right, lovely. So I'm going to finish um, our circle tonight with a, a reading, which I love. 
from Susanna Michaelis, um, and it's called Wild Woman Awake. So just bring in your hands to your heart for a moment. Just have a nice deep breath for yourself. And just really, again, just being really open to receive. Just receive. Awake in wild, a wonderful woman to the truth of who you are. Allow yourself to feel your feelings. Adventures call. Be true to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Believe in your power and your strength. You are called to the dance of living wild and free. Celebrate each other. The seasons, the full moon, dress for yourself. Do what needs to be done with love. No more should. End the reign of critics, both internal and external. Emerge from the chrysalis, it's time to fly. Forget nice. Feed yourself what nourishes and inspires you. Freedom begins in the mind and the heart. Grieve your losses. Cry, wail. You'll get through. Give yourself the gift of choice. Hold yourself dear. Head to toe. Love your body. Help yourself to healing. Invite friends to ceremonies to mark transitions. Inhibitions are not part of a wild woman's wardrobe. Juice up your thoughts, your actions, your life. Jump. It's not as far as it seems. Kindle the kind of friendships you dream about. Soul friends are the greatest treasure. Kiss more. Listen to your inner voice. Life is meant to be fun. Live joyfully. Laugh from your belly. Love, meditate and pray to deepen and strengthen your connection to spirit. Melt into loving. Nature awaits your presence. Notice the good things. No is a very good word to use when you mean no. Own what is yours. Let go of projections. Open your worlds to new opportunities, new creativity. Play with colour. Paint, weave, wear. Protect your wild heart with great self-esteem. Question yourself. Am I leading the life I want to lead? If not, why not? If not now, then when? Relax. Slow down. Refuse to be crushed, restrained or tamed. Revive and revere your inner goddess. Let her shine. Sensuality is wholesome. Enjoy. Speak your truth. Sing. Put on some great music and shake out, shake out all that holds you back. Touch the earth. Get your hands in the soil. Trust your intuition. Tell naysayers goodbye. Take risks. Undo learnt behaviours which harm you. Use your resources to support you. Value your dreams and aspirations. Start today to make them come true. Wild is different for each woman, so honour your unique wildness. Expect to make a difference. Expect change and expansion. Yes, you can be wild. Yes, you can be free. Wholeheartedly you. Zany, wacky, doesn't matter what they call you. Welcome home, wild, wonderful woman. So take in a lovely deep breath in. Beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous wild women. Thank you so much for being here. Our circle today is now closed. Have a beautiful month ahead. Let's bring our candles in and blow a little bit of light into the week ahead, the month ahead. So one, two, three. Beautiful. Thank you, everyone. Our next circle is going to be on the 19th of Feb um, for New Moon. Um, so I shall very much look forward to seeing some of you then.
and um, connecting with you maybe in the group as well. You're very welcome. Send you your love, the love. <laughs> love you. Thank you. Uh, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Bye. Bye.